another at home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Lee Fexmore, and I am here to bring you everything you need to know about the Rocket League world. We've got yet another wonderful show for you guys today. We're capping off the Intel World Open highlights with the Asia Maritime and Oceania Regionals in Grid Watch. We have a look at Devo in Double Tap. And of course, we got all the stuff you love from the community in the breakout. Before we get into all that, though, I got to mention there have been a series of famous cars released in Rocket League recently. We can add another one to the list. The James Bond Aston Martin DB5 will be available until August 4th, so you can uh, go pick it up. Of course, you have to act quick. Uh, the bundle comes with the wheels, one of a kind engine, audio, uh, the signature silver birch paint job and a decal. It costs 1,100 credits and will only be available for a limited time, as I just mentioned, but it looks more like more James Bond uh, cars will be released later in the year. Now, with that out of the way, we got to move on because we're closing out the Intel World Open in Gridwatch. <laughs> The Intel World Open was an excellent showcase of teams and players who don't normally get their time in the international spotlight. Proof that beyond the RLCS's recognized regions, there exists talent that can give even champions a run for their money. While the outcome of the Asia Maritime and Oceania Regional Finals might not surprise you, some of the near victories were still quite the sight to behold, and worth celebrating. The group stage was nearly wall-to-wall -wall 3-0 sweeps, with two notable exceptions, both engineered by the same team. Indonesia A, the trio of Ripupi, Ficio, and Gon, gave both Oceanic teams won a hell of a fight. First against New Zealand, off of whom they stole a game and forced nearly every round into overtime, and then against the presumed winners themselves, Australia. Indonesia A's group stage match versus the Aussies pushed both teams to the absolute limit and nearly resulted in the biggest upset of the tournament. While Australia took the first game with a decisive 5-2 scoreline, Indonesia A refused to cede momentum, taking round two in overtime to put a point in the board. They will be the ones with the series advantage in that gauntlet bracket, and we will have two Indonesian teams playing first tomorrow. To keep that scenario, it's certainly off the cards temporarily. In fact, it's Ooh. going to be as a link up in midfield, and Rapupi catching the defense off guard. Broccoli will get a game. It seemed Australia were in the mood for a seesaw match, though, as they fired back with another solid win to put them back in the lead. What they couldn't see coming was Indonesia A achieving a crushing 7-1 victory in the next round, tying up the score and placing both teams at match point as they head into the final possible game. It was a close round with the narrowest scoreline of any non-OT game, but in the end, Season X Oceanic champs managed to clinch it and achieve top seed. Does keep it up in the air. Rippipi is there. Oh, oh he got bumped by his own teammate. Didn't have a lot of boost. Here comes Bicio. Still plenty of boost. Torzos there to cause a few issues, and Rabupi can't oh. find the back of the net, and that will do it. On to the bracket, which kicked off with Indonesian teams A and B squaring off to see who would have the honor of battling the Oceanic teams for dominance. Much like in the group stage, Team A conquered with a flawless 3-0 sweep, though to their credit, Team B put on a better showing than before, even bringing the middle round into overtime. Dev gets bumped out of the way as well. Squirrels there, noob to Send it on. Where is Depp? He's sitting on this left hand side. How long can oh, they keep this hit. ball up for? Noob is, is right there as well. Back towards the middle. Squirrel saved by God. Where's oh, Depp? You're going to fly it. God again with in. the save. He's still in. Here comes Noob. Oh, oh it's gone the floor. Oh, what a chance for best defenders, Asia but they are the ones to drop out. Next up, Indonesia A versus New Zealand, a matchup which had previously ended definitively in New Zealand's favor. Indonesia had learned a lot from the previous loss, however, reversing their fortunes to pull off their second consecutive sweep, leaving New Zealand in the dust. Curiously, once again, a sole round went into overtime, a strange pattern to Indonesia A's bracket matches. Finally, the long-awaited rematch, another shot at the closest clash the tournament had seen thus far. Indonesia A sprinted out of the gate in the grand finals, winning the premier bout in a brief overtime to give themselves an early advantage against Australia. Things were looking up. If they could repeat their performance from the group stage, they might be able to pull off a win this time. He did such a good job of getting his car underneath that and wrapped around that ball at the same time as Rapupi. He fakes two. He takes it past the last. The ball oh. it's open in front of the net and Indonesia go one up. Oh my goodness, getting the first in the first 10 seconds and in the first 10 seconds of overtime, they win the first game. Oh my, oh my. We said that Australia had something to worry about in this oh. Indonesian side. 
But alas, it was not meant to be. The Ground Zero squad were eager to demonstrate the skills which made them Oceania's champions, and they did so with style by hammering home three consecutive games, widening the gap with each round until Indonesia had no chance of catching up. Rises to the challenge and defending their crown faultlessly. Indonesia have battled hard. They have defied all the odds to be here. But in the end, only one team is inevitable. Australia take it in four. Space One representing Australia. They are your regional champions for the Oceania and Asia Maritime region here at the Intel World Open. So there you have it, ground zero. Titans of not just Oceania, but Maritime Asia as well. Clinching their second major victory of the year as proof of their teamwork, adaptation, and strong play. It's off to you, mate. It's been a while since we talked to him, so I think it's about time we bring him back on here. Welcome to the show, Adam Lawler Thornton. What's up, buddy? Miss you. Hey, how's it going, bud? Doing all right, you know. Uh, just uh, just hanging out in my room playing video games, as <laughs> everyone is now. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot going on, is there? <laughs> <laughs> not not at all. We're in we're in a, a, an off season for specifically Rocket League and the RLCS right now. There's a couple events happening here and there, you know, uh, but for the most part, we're chilling out right now. So uh, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what's been going on in the off season, of course. At this point, we see rosters start going crazy. Everyone starts trying to find the next big thing. We ended the season. We saw our champions. And everyone wants to beat those champions. So uh, I know you keep your ear to the ground on a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I know there's True. some things you can't talk about. But I'm going to try to get as much out of you as possible and start talking uh, about these rosters. So uh, I think we just need to get the big one out of the way. Off the bat, one of the biggest roster moves, I think, in the history of RLCS is an international transfer. Now, we know that's been done before. We saw it with Drippy. Right. We saw it with Turbo. This is a whole team. I'm talking about true neutral. Talk to me about this because I, I think this is huge. Yeah, this, uh, and I've said this publicly both on my own show as well as on channels and all that kind of stuff. This is the biggest roster offseason um, move that's going to happen. There's nothing that will top this. I don't care who switches. You can take one of the top teams and, and seeing a transfer in that, but this is the biggest one uh, simply because the fact that it's not just like an individual player who's really, really good. It's literally the best team from south america trying to prove themselves in what we deem the best region in north america currently so uh, i think it's absolutely fantastic the fact that they're putting themselves in a position to not only go with the cons of everything of giving up you know the prize money and pretty much an auto bid to the world championship if it does happen this year um but just uh, the ability to compete against the best of the best with no guarantees really because they have to re-qualify through open qualifiers I, th I think what's we crazy, assume. yeah, we I think assume. this is what's crazy though, is like that, that you're right. You, you touch on a point of that they're giving up a lot. I mean, like they're mm -hmm. the best, right? We're like, okay, let's basically be guaranteed top three in our region and give that up. But that to me shows the competitiveness in them that they're like, yeah. no, we want to be the best of the best. Yeah, I think it's awesome. And, and Furious credit to them as well, kind of pulling out all the stops and true neutral as well doing the same thing. I mean, Fury obviously now without Tander, um, trying to make some adjustments because they recognize like, hey, this is a new opportunity for us, but you're seeing True Neutral go above and beyond, you know, moving those guys to just outside Plato Carmen, great area. So they're gonna be, you know, living the dream. And even if it goes south, I think it's similar to the situation with Drippe, which it's an opportunity. It's something that you have to say yes to and put yourself in that kind of position, which uh, is happening a lot around the scene just for other roster changes. So I am happy to see that they're putting themselves in a position to obviously get better but uh i'm curious on how things are going to go based upon all these offseason tournaments that are happening they're winning they just won another one literally like five seconds before we started this recording i forget what it was uh but they just won another event and obviously the top dogs of competition aren't in those but the nerd street summer championships uh just ended and they won that too so that's now two tournaments this offseason that they've already won uh in north america now that they've been able to compete uh, since I think it was like July 5th, I think was the official date that they could compete technically in North American tournaments. So um, it's awesome to see them putting their names out there and kind of getting that recognition. It's just going to be really weird for, I think, both yourself and myself to recognize them as a North American team and not a South American team that's migrated because they are technically now a North American team. For, for North America, you know, you're, you're saying I don't know where. I kind of want to see if we can theory craft them in, you know, what? Let's make an early assessment. Do do we think they're going to sneak into 
Uh, are they going to be top 16, top 8? Are they going to be able to take games off of those top dogs in, in North America? Or do we feel like they'll float in that bubble area, you know, with your, your Alpines or KCPs? I think there's going to be a little bit of harsh reality at the beginning. Although they're a very talented team, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind of like the individual skill this team has. Um, I do think they are our top 8, top 10 potential for sure. Um, but I think initially it's going to be a very rude awakening. When they come over, there's a lot of issues in the South American playstyle that are glaring. Very, very easy to fix. Um, but despite that, they still haven't done it yet, which concerns me a little bit. I think this one's going to be a big job for the coach and whoever helps them on the back end to make those adjustments at a very rapid rate. And we've seen those kind of issues even for North America teams. You look at, for example, the former Kansas City Pioneers, uh, now Shopify Rebellion team, where they came in and they, you know, flight a team that should have been relegated and was, then comes in with one new player and all of a sudden they're, you know, a top four team. And then they plateau and then they drop down and then they start to bounce back. So it's like making those adjustments over the 10 and a half month season is really, really tough. It's a lot of pressure. Um, so I think that's going to be the biggest challenge, but I do think capability wise, they've already shown they can compete against some of the best. They are, in my opinion, South America is a better region than OCE. We saw that, you know, back in December of 2019, it was a long time ago. So I think there's a lot of question marks that we have. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me again, man. And I hope to talk to you again soon. for very long as they just boom it into the Australian half of the field. Now Amphis, KBM or no not, way. he's flipping all the oh way down. Oh my goodness. That's incredible from Amphis. Ridiculous, he's like leapfrogging the whole defense. This year gets faked out with the flip reset. He reaches it on the bounce. In the, in the last season. Express that try fang Torsos oh. and he finds them so he does turns it in ties it up express delivery strikes again look at this pinpoint accuracy and speak of the shot as well Ficio he couldn't get up in time the pressure that is on you in this format never gives up and oh, oh he's well a, he's off to a good start well yeah he's off to a very good start not played yesterday did gone but what from what i remember of him in the close qualifiers he was crucial in this broccoli side and optimistic noob had depth downfield but he couldn't commit to turning on that play depth now forced one oh, is in falling it in just trickles into the net, does it? And Noob does all the work to get it past all the defenders. And again, CGM just goes up for that ball, not quite sure what he's doing. Forget Hot Girl Summer. That was Hot Shots Carved Summer. I'm not even going to pretend to know if that was a bad joke or not, because I don't get the reference. Thanks, producer. <laughs> Let's uh, get into the good stuff, though. Here, First up, Huge Sherbert4928 provides us with this clutch version of That's So Calculated. Yeah, at that point, your mind is already preparing for overtime. I, I don't know if I would be mad as the opponent. That is something I feel you can only know in the heat of the moment. I, it's great, but I was ready for overtime. I don't know. Well, since we're doing pinches, next up, XLDTS provides us with this epic pinch. Okay, first off to get a triple pinch, that's not easy. But then 203 kilometers per hour. Yeah, that 
That actually is wild. New meta. We call this the, the rocket cannon. Or the rocket ship. Something. We're, we're going to come up with a name with it. But I want to see this in pro play very soon. Anyways, we got to move on to something a little, uh, a little classier. A little smoother, I suppose. It's this play from NZRL. I know usually we like to stick to weird, wacky, or crazy plays, but we, we had to show a good one here today in the breakout because that was a murder. I'm sorry, Orange, but um, go home. Let's keep it on the smooth because our next one here comes from What the F, you guys? Holy heck, I think I need I think I need to switch to Dominus. That was the that was the craziest wave dash dribble I've ever seen. Jiminy crickets. I'm still thinking about that. Okay. Well, I guess we gotta get to the next one. Uh, <laughs> finally up last here, Jack18888. I got them all. Gets the Rocket League equivalent of blue balls. Uh, I heard so, you know, flip reset double tap flip reset musty double flip reset double and it hit the ground although that I don't know what the defender was doing they just drove away they're like okay you can have this but it didn't go on I'm so sad can we not dwell on this anymore let's move on. let's move on up next double tap is taking a look at the career of Devo Devo is something of a Rocket League renaissance man. As a Season 1 veteran, former world champion, and pioneer of a powerful technique, he's the type of player to have seen it all and done it all. So in celebration of his soon-to-be 11th consecutive season on the scene, let's take a look back at Devo's storied career. A tale of highs, lows, and incredible achievements. The British behemoth got his start in the RLCS's first season as the fourth player on Team Effort, a squad which unfortunately flunked out of the European Regional Qualifier, coming dead last in the group stage after failing to win even one match. Despite his rocky start, Devo continued to play and improve, eventually getting picked up by Mocket Esports prior to the start of the second season. This time, Devo and co. would absolutely demolish the qualifier, making it through the bracket without even dropping a single game, let alone match. The team ended up placing third on the Season 2 EU Regional, earning them a ticket to the World Championship Series. In cash, Skyline with a chance here off the backboard. Can he follow it up? He puts it on target, but a little bit too soft, and Panda will be able to keep that one away. Siki, one more chance here if they can keep this one in the air to tie this up, and it will touch the ground. Mock it with the complete sweep 4-0 wow. against Precision Z, and they'll take third. Making it to Worlds in just his second year of pro competition was no small feat, and many eyes were on Devo, since as the sole player repping Britain in the land, expectations were high. But Devo didn't just meet expectations, he shattered them. Mockett put in one hell of an upper bracket run, making it all the way to the Grand Finals without dropping a single game. Unfortunately, they were denied the gold thanks to Flipside Tactics pulling off an insane bracket reset, but Devo's exploits were impressive nonetheless. Can he get this one? He turns it around, but bumped by Cox. Marky will have a chance to move this one outwards. Breezy Meister off the backboard. Pash takes it to Devo, but Cooks here rolls himself in. Back off the backboard. Back 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 oh, oh appropriate! But Cooks down and take it! They take the championship! Let's they get fucking aces! Let's your world champion for the last in Amsterdam! Give it up to your team! Of course, Devo's true claim to fame would come in Season 3. Now playing under Northern Gaming, Devo once again made it to LAN, though in a lower seed than the previous year. Things looked grim when Northern Gaming was sent down to the lower bracket in just their second match, but in an inversion of the previous year's finals, Devo tore through the lower bracket, bursting through to the Grand Finals with sheer force of will. To save this. Still dangerous fire burner. 20 seconds remaining. That's a big demo on Garrett as well. He will not be involved in any more of this offense. 13 seconds, Firebender couldn't make contact with the front of his car. 10 seconds remaining, and Northern Gaming could be about to break the streak. They are no longer the bronze medalists. They are going to the grand finals. Northern Gaming able to finally break their curse. They're moving on to the grand finals. 
It was the UK player's finest hour. In yet another amazing parallel, this time it was Devo who had to pull off a bracket reset, and against former sponsor Maka to boot. Not only did Northern Gaming pull it off without aplomb, but Devo even showed off his expertise with a gorgeous double tap off the backboard, a signature technique that would later become the staple in many a pro's arsenal. We're not really sure who's going to go for the clears. Devo looks for the pressure. Open no net. Can he double tap this in? Oh Devo! my goodness! The Oceania region named that move after this player, and look at him perform here on the world stage. Reading Fairy Peaks for touch. What is that? An absolute monster. We saw him pull this out in his debut in season two, and he continues to impress us. One extremely close set later, and he was merely Devo no longer. Now he was Devo World Championship MVP, and one of fewer than 10 players to earn the title of best in the world. One goal can still tie the game, but Devo will let it touch, and Northern Gaming has done it when they could not for the last two seasons, the world champion here in Los Angeles. Third place, two seasons in a row. And with, without their star maestro, they come through with Turbo and win what nobody else could. Devo making himself a household name in season two. He proceeds to end the grand final, still bring out one of his favorite double tap goals, play well for his team, both of these teams played so safe. The newly minted champion would undergo a bit of a turbulent period following his momentous win, failing to qualify for Worlds several times and underperforming on the occasions he did make it. He was far from washed up, however, and had returned to putting in amazing performances lately, such as being one of the few players to defeat Season X Juggernaut's Team BDS at a major, and placing third in all of Europe at the Intel World Open. Into the grand finals, their inaugural appearance after taking down BDS. Devo's been a part of Rocket League history since near the beginning, and continues to make Rocket League history to this day. Some old flames die out, but others keep burning bright long into the night. I just specifically want to take the moment right now to comment on the fact that we have a segment called Double Tap, and we finally got to do Devo. Because for anyone who doesn't know a little trivia, all of the Oceanic players actually called Double Taps Devos for the longest time because Devo was one of the players to consistently be able to pull off that mechanic in the earlier days of Bracket League. So I, th I just thought that was, it was cool to me, okay? It was cool to me. But yeah, as you, as you heard with Lawler uh, in the interview earlier, roster shakeups all around the corner. So we'll see where uh, what happens with that roster with Devo there. But that is all the time we have for today. You can check out more of our content, of course, on YouTube and on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, we're going to leave you with a little overtime action. Here is your weekly backfire.